God. Amen. 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 And amen. I give God the glory. I love worship. I was created to worship. And I did not always know that. But how many know that experiences is the best teacher? Amen. And God has been too good for all of us and to all of us to sit down on God. Minister Tony, we will not be silent. Amen. But we will open our mouths and give praises to the King. Amen. I first want to take this opportunity to acknowledge in their absence our presiding prelate, none other than Bishop Willie Bradley, Bishop Dr. Willie Bradley, amen. And our senior international prophetess, none other than Dr. Gwendolyn Bradley. We certainly bless Chief Elder Mitchell and Chief Elder Teller this morning, awesome women of God in your own right. God bless you. Amen. And everybody here that is a part of the fivefold, amen. We bless you in your respected places. And we just give God the glory this morning. I am humbly, amen. I am humbly grateful for this opportunity. And I tell you, Bishop is a unique individual. I too got that phone call. And he don't even wait for you to respond. He don't even give you an opportunity to contemplate whether you're going to accept the assignment or not. Bishop called me on Friday. Minister Jan. Well, he left me a text, then I called him. I said, Bishop, hey, now, Minister Jan, how you doing? I said, I'm doing great. How's things going great, Bishop? You in Birmingham? Yes, Bishop. Good, good, good. You going to be at church Sunday? Sure, bring the word with you. <laughs> I said, yes, sir. Amen. I'm just so excited about what God is going to do in this place this morning. There is a word, and we're not going to prolong, but I do ask if you would join me in prayer because you all know that we can't do anything without Jesus the Christ. We need the anointing of God supernaturally to do what God has designed us to do. Amen. So, Father, in the name of Jesus and by the power of the Holy Ghost, we just come to you this morning to say, God, we just thank you. Thank you for being Lord of lords and King of kings. Father, we thank you for being Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. And beside you, there is none compared to who you are. And for that, God, we say thank you, God. For that, we know that you are worthy of our praise, God. And we just Praise you today, oh God. Now, Father, I come before you this morning, and I ask God that you will forgive me of all things that I have done contrary to the plans of God, oh God. If I've moved in the wrong way, if I've spoken a word that was not pleasing to your, your soul, if I have spoken Lord God, I thought, I thought, God, that did not bring you glory. I repent of that, Lord. I ask God that you were creating me a clean heart and that you were renewing me a right spirit, oh God. I ask God that you will decrease me and increase yourself, that nothing comes forward but the oracles of Jesus the Christ, oh God. Illuminate this place and fill it, oh God, with the anointing of Christ Jesus, oh God. Release your scepter against the enemy in the name of Jesus. Oh God, release your arm, God, upon us, God, upon me, oh God, that will make preaching and teaching easy, oh God. Give me clarity of the word of God that I may deliver your word, oh God. 
speaking in truth, correctly dividing the word of God, that a baby will be able to understand, oh God. Father, we thank you. And Satan, we serve you notice right now. You can pack your bags and you can get out. Because nothing shall come forth but the unadulterated word of God. We bind all hindrance. We bind all frustrations, agitation. We bind all spirits that will come in, oh God, and keep the people from receiving the word of God. We bind all hindrance. We have moved into a new level, a new dispensation, a new realm, and we will not be hindered. We will not be blocked, and we cannot be stopped. God, we thank you and we bless you. It is in Jesus, the Christ's holy name of Israel. Now, God, you are welcome in this place. Take your seat up, oh, Father, and speak to your people. Unclog their ears and move the blinders from their eyes that they may hear and see you, Jesus. Amen and amen and amen. We give God the glory this morning. Amen. I have several scriptures that I will be reading from. And Eric, I'm going to read from the screen. And our first scripture is going to be Titus 2, 7, and 8. And I just thank God for the book of Titus. I thank God for my boy Paul. Amen. And God is calling us to be Titus 2 men and women. And he wants us to get in spiritual alignment and in spiritual order with his word that we may step into the destiny that God has given unto us. So Titus 2, 7, and 8. Show yourself in all respects to be a model of good works and in all your teachings show integrity and dignity. Verse 8 and sound speech that cannot be condemned so that an opponent may be put to shame having nothing evil to say about us. God is calling us to live a life that is filled with integrity, amen, and dignity that those who have the hater blinders on cannot be able to speak any ill will against us in the name of Jesus. Now we're going to come from Romans 1, 1 through 3. And it reads as follows, Paul, a servant of Christ Jesus, called to be an apostle, set apart for the gospel of God. God, we thank you, which he promised beforehand through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures. Concerning his son who was descended from David according to the flesh. We know that David is in the lineage of Jesus Christ. So we know that everything come from Jesus was made for purpose. Amen. Okay, now we're going to go to Psalms 18 and 33, and this is the message. Now I run like a deer. I'm king over the mountain. You better say you're a king and a queen, and you better walk in it in the name of Jesus. Luke 5 and 4, the NLT reads, when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into deep water and let down the nets for a catch. He said, let down the nets for a catch. God is calling us to leap out into the deep so that we can catch some good fish. Amen. And we're going to go to Acts 9, 1 through about 18, um, and we're going to read the word of God because it's the word of God that destroys every yoke. Amen. Meanwhile, Saul was uttering threats with every breath and was eager to kill the Lord's followers. So he went to the high priest. He requested letters addressed to the synagogues in Damascus, asking for their cooperation in the arrest of any followers of the way he found there. He wanted to bring them both men and women back to Jerusalem in chains. As he was approaching Damascus on this mission, a light from heaven suddenly shined down around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? 
Who are you, Lord? Saul asked, and the voice replied, I am Jesus, the one you are persecuting. Now get up and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. The men with Saul stood speechless, for they heard the sound of someone's voice, but saw no one. Saul picked himself up off the ground, but when he opened his eyes, he was blind. So his companions led him by the hand to Damascus. He remained there blind for three days and did not eat or drink. He, now there was a believer in Damascus named Ananias. The Lord spoke to him in a vision, calling Ananias. Yes, Lord, he replied. The Lord said, go over to Straight Street. Mm, there's something about a straight street. To see the house of Judas. Where you, when you get there, ask for a man, Tarsus, named Saul. He is praying to me right now. I'm going to stop right now and give you the text. I am stepping up, I am stepping out, and destiny is calling. Destiny is calling from and for you. Amen. When I think about Paul, and we're going to dig a little deeper about this man they call Paul the Apostle, but you got to remember he was first Saul. So we're going to go into his background because y'all know we judgmental, even in the church, and we want to consider a person's background. So we need to know a little bit about these individuals that we're dealing with. Amen. So let's talk about destiny because we are stepping into our ministry. Amen. Bishop have given us the topic. As we prepare to go into the new year, we're stepping up, we're stepping out, and we're moving into who God is calling us to be. So what is destiny? Mm. If you know the story of Paul, you're going to know what destiny truly means. The events that will, will necessarily happen to a particular person or thing in the future. Or the hidden power believed to be control what will happen in the future. Well, if you know the story of Paul, you know that God knew his future. Amen. And because he stepped into a place on a road called Damascus. My God, my God, the event that God orchestrated divinely to happen to move this man into his destiny. What does it mean to step? Mm. Stepping, mm, to lift, to move, to tread, amen, to walk in order, to move to a new position, to set up, amen. Now, Psalms 18 and 33, now I, now I run like a deer. I'm a king of the mountains. Our focus scripture is going to be Acts 9, 3 through 5, the Damascus Road experience, the event that had to happen that shaped the world in its day and still shaping the world. Amen. I thought about the Duchess of Sussex. Y'all know who she is, right? Oh, Megan. And I, I told my daughter-in-law, I said, you know, do you have some stilettos? Because, you know, I'm, I got a little bit more season. I'm a big girl. You know, pretty plus. My baby called me big baby. So, you may not see me in these. Amen. But for those who are able to step into these type of stilettos, God bless you. <laughs> That's all right. That's all right. But ladies like me, they got some nice wedges, just so you know. Amen, amen, and amen again. 
But I had to go on after I, I, I began, God began to give me what this stepping is all about. And he began to process me through that. And I'm like, okay, God, what are you saying? So I went, of course, on my little best friend, Google. And that's when I found out that the Duchess have worn shoes, stilettos from Tamara Mellon. Now, men, I got y'all too. Because y'all wear Gucci. Gucci is where I went with them. But I th looked at Tamara Mellon, and I'm like, hmm, I want to see what her shoes look like. How much these shoes cost? Because you know, men and women pay great for their shoes. I really didn't realize just how much they paid for shoes until I actually went on to look at some of her shoes. Well, her shoes go up to $8,000. I said, Lord, bless them who can afford her shoes. But I'm so glad to know hmm, that and it's not about the physical shoe, amen. It's about having those feet, like hind's feet, like a deer, that you will be able to step up, step out, and step into your destiny. So I went on to Gucci, amen. And I said, okay, what Gucci got going on? Well, if anybody know my nephew Blake, he wears Gucci. If anybody know uh, little Billy Drayden, he wears Gucci. So I said, what is it about this Gucci? I want to see what the men got going on over here. Here. So I went on to see what Gucci cost. Uh, and little did I know, Gucci goes up to a thousand as well. I said, Well, bless the man that is able to afford to wear the Gucci. Amen. <laughs> because I understand that it's not the name brand that gets you to your destiny, it is God that gets us to our destiny. And because we are in this place today, we are prepared to step it up step out and we gonna step into our destiny and I decree declare and I command it to be so over your life in the name of Jesus so now this brings us to our boy Paul mm. so let's talk about him let's talk about Paul oh when I think about Paul mm. so let's go and let's talk about Saul a little bit well you got to talk about Saul in order to appreciate Paul right all right, the original name was Saul. Hmm. Saul was notorious for killing Christians. Saul was blunt. He was brutal. Saul was a bad boy. Saul in his day was considered what we consider to be a terrorist in this day. Saul did not play. Those who knew Saul began to tremble when they heard Saul was coming to town because they know that Saul was coming in. He was going into their household. How many people today you know that's brave enough to go into your house and dry, drag you out? This is what Saul did baby. Saul didn't play. He was the original thug. Do you understand me? He didn't play. He was about his business. He was zealous. He was intelligent. Paul spoke at least three different languages. His parents were a Pharisees, which caused me to understand why Saul acted out a little bit. Amen. <laughs> Saul was a bad boy. Saul was fearless. Saul was, a, Saul was considered the most dangerous man in that time. Mm. Saul was so bad. Saul sat on the Sanhedrin um, panto when they got ready to stone Brother Stephen to death. Saul stamped it with approval. I want him dead. I want him stoned. Now take him out. And that's what happened. We're talking about Paul this morning. How many have been some Pauls? Amen. You may not have killed anybody physically, but you kill them with your mouth. You kill them with your actions. Hmm. How many Pauls we have sitting in the audience today? How many Saul's we have sitting in the audience today? Well, I love Paul. Paul was so zealous about his faith. His faith did not compromise. He didn't care who you was. If your head was stamped on us with the C, 
you were going to die. He was zealous about what he did. And to him, he had integrity. To him, that was the right thing to do. He was taught very well to take him out. Paul was a bad boy, better known as Saul. So let's talk about what he did that led him to the Damascus Road experience. Saul went to the high priest, and he wanted letters in reference to the synagogue. For those who love Jesus, who was preaching the word, Paul was angry, filled with rage on his way to his Damascus Road experience. Paul went to kill and asked questions later. He went to take them out. You better remember that Saul went into people's homes, dragging them out, men and the women, and killing them. And he did not play about that. But on his way, on his way, on his way, how many people know that when you are doing what you're supposed to do for Jesus, the enemy get amped up. The enemy get mad. People sit around and plot to kill you, plot your demise, cause sabotages. People do a manner of wicked behaviors when they don't know the love of Jesus the Christ. When they don't have God that they are accountable to, they are open to do anything with no conscience. And that's how Paul was, better known as Saul. But on his way to Damascus, he was thrown to his feet. I thank God that God threw him to his feet. And I do believe, and theologians do believe, or theologians, however you want to pronounce it, if you will, believe that he knew of the Lord. And I believe that too because his parents were Pharisees. And they taught them the laws of Moses. Amen. So on his way, he was thrown off of, off of his horse. He was just thrown. Thrown. Knocked all the way down. Knocked down to his feet. And could not get up. Couldn't get up. He wasn't going to get up until God said so. Till God said for him to get up. We talking about a notorious killer. A terrorist. Knocked straight to his knees, Dick and Billy. But God. But God. God picked him up after he talked to him a little bit. How many has had a domestic road experience? I don't know about you all, but I had mine. And I'm not ashamed to say it. Because had not I had that experience, I would not be standing before you this day. But because I had my Damascus Road experience, I am able to step up and step out and walk into the destiny that God has called me by way of the Holy Ghost. So as Paul began to speak with God, God began to give him instructions, but God asked him questions. So let's go back, Eric. Okay, Erica. Give him a little bit of season, so I have to look. Let's go back to, we want to go to Acts 8 and 3. Can you pull that up for me, please? But Saul was going everywhere to destroy the church. He went from house to house, dragging out both men and women to throw them into prison. I wanted you to see that and know that this is the word of God that I am speaking of. So let's go on back to Acts 9 and let's read 3, 5 through 
6. That's going to be Acts 9, and we're going to be starting at verse 3. And it reads, As he was approaching Damascus on this mission, a light from heaven suddenly shone down around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? I say to you today, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Why are you persecuting people that love the Lord? Why are you persecuting people that is on the wrong call straight? Why are you tearing down your sisters and brothers with your mouth? Why are you tearing down sisters and brothers with your actions? Why is it? What would cause people to do the things that they do? Because they are persecuting Jesus. When we are doing things that is not of God and that does not align with the word of God, we are persecuting Jesus the Christ. Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? What is causing you? To do these things, what has bewitched you? What has done this? Why are you hurting people? Whether they're saved or not saved. Why are you killing my people? You did not give them life. Why are you taking their life? I heard the woman of God praying for the children. What would cause people to want to kill children? What would cause people to want to go into schools and kill up another child? What would cause this? What would cause bullying on our jobs? What would cause bullying in the church? What would cause bullying on the streets? Saul, so, Saul, so why are you persecuting my people? Why are you persecuting me? Why? What is in you that will cause you to hate so much and be notorious about it? What is that? What would make you do it? You will no longer do that to my people. I come to serve you notice as a messenger today. You will no longer do that to my people. And if you do, you're going to have a Damascus Road experience. Now, I cannot tell you what that looks like for you. I know what the Bible said in reference to Saul. I know what the Bible did in reference to Saul. You have read it. You have heard me read it. So you know. So you have been warned. Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? No longer will you do that. Because if you continue, you will experience a Damascus road, whatever that looks like. My God, my God, thank God for the word. Thank God that he loves Saul enough to change his name. Thank God that Paul said, yes, God, I hear you. I didn't know you at first. I knew about you. I had heard about you. And because of that wickedness that was in me caused me to take your people out. But God, I hear you. Marvin Sapp has a new song that say God is speaking. Please listen. Please listen to God. Please listen to him. Because he is not playing with us. And that goes for me too. Amen. That goes for each and every one of us that's sitting in this room. Because God wants us to step it up. He wants us to step it out. He wants us to launch out into the deep. He wants our light to shine so before man that man will begin to glorify their father which is in heaven. That's what God wants. So let's talk about the Paul that we know. We know Paul, and I love him. Paul and David are my boys. 
Because even though I am a lady, I can identify with those boys. Amen. And yeah, I call them boys. I know they were men, but they're my boys. Amen. So let's talk about Paul and what he did. Oh, my God. We're talking about a notorious killer. Went in people's houses. Who would have thought that God would have used such a man? And y'all know we can be judgmental as church folks. We can be so judgmental as church folks. They don't have no right to be here. They don't have no right to sit here. Who are they? Who, who they think they are? They don't even supposed to be in here. They done been to prison. They done sold drugs. They done used drugs. They done slept around. They done been abusive. They ain't got no right. How can God use them? How can God use you? How can he? How can he use you? I heard um, Dr. Ramsey preach a sermon. I'll never forget it. It talked about, and he had a table. He had people sitting around the table. The table had murderers. People had that on their shirt. I want to say adulterous, many things. He set them all at the table. And he asked us, who are y'all to say they don't have the right to sit at the table of Jesus? Who are we? We know that God used Paul. God used Paul in such a manner. When he knocked him on his knees, when Paul got up, Paul's name was changed. It was Saul, but it was changed to Paul. He stepped it up. He stepped it out. And he went into his destiny. This man was so awesome that he wrote almost the new t all of the New Testament. Paul wrote Romans, Galatians, Colossians, 1st and 2nd Timothy, 1st and 2nd Thelonians, Ephesians, Philippians, Philemon. Paul wrote them all. And then he came on and wrote Titus. And God is calling us to be Titus to men and women. To be audacious, to be bold, to step it up, step it out, and walk into our destiny. So if he used Paul, who are we to say he can't use us? I just want to encourage you today that it doesn't matter what you have grown through. And I say grown because it's just momentarily affliction. It's going to pass, too, if you hang in there now. You got to hang in there. You can't throw in the towel. Even though it gets rough, even though it gets hard, you got to stand. You got to have a tenacity. You got to endure. The race is not given to the swift nor the strong, but to those who can endure until the end. You got to have some endurance about yourself. You can't just sit up and take what the devil dish out to you. We talked about what it means to step. Step means to tread. The last I read, God said, I've given you power to tread over all serpents, scorpions, all evil things. All things are matter, a matters creeping and crawling things. It don't matter what it is. I have given you the authority. So people of God today, walk in your authority. Embrace who God has called you to be. Be men and women of integrity. Men and women of dignity. Men and women who understand that they are audacious. And you want to know what that is? You're bold. You fearless. You courageous. That's what Paul was. Saul was all that and a bag of chips doing what the devil wanted him to do. But when he found out who Jesus was, when God began to remove the blinders from his eyes, he was able to step it up, 
step it out, launch out into the deep, and he caught so many fish. Now, I don't know about y'all, but y'all better know, if y'all don't know today, that Paul was the most important man that came after Jesus. I'm telling you he was. My research tells me he was. Paul, notorious for taking people out, for killing people. After Jesus, it was Paul. Paul was the most important man in history after Jesus the Christ. A man that did not mind killing God's people. God is calling us higher today. He is calling us to step it up and step out. He wants us to launch into the deep. There's a dying world out there. The fish is out there, not in here. We've got to prepare to go catch. We've got to prepare to catch. I want to give you a few nuggets, and then I'm going to take my seat. How do we step it up, step it out, as Paul stepped onto a road called Damascus? To step it up and step out and step into our destiny, we must listen to the voice of God. We must obey the voice of God, and we must make haste. Paul made haste. He did. Now, Ananias didn't want to deal with Brother Paul. He didn't want to deal with him because you got to remember, Paul was a bad boy. Ananias was scared. I'm just going to be honest. I probably would have been too. Because your, your reputation perceives you. Okay? Paul was known for his reputation. What is yours? He didn't make no bones about it. I'm a bad boy. Y'all know I'm a bad boy. And when I come, you better get running. Because I'm coming. But he prayed. And God removed the fish scales from his eyes. He removed the blinders. And when he did that, Paul was able to move forward. I love the word relentless. And if my life coach is here, she knows that I do. Relentless means it's almost like you take a rubber band and you can stretch that rubber band, but when you let it go, it goes back into its original form. Paul was relentless in his pursuit to serve God and to obey God, to do what God called him to do. And God let him know that he would suffer, y'all. And he did. He suffered. He suffered. He did. But that didn't stop him. He kept writing letters. He wrote from the prison. He encouraged God's people to keep it moving, to don't stop, to stay connected, to love one another, to encourage one another. And that's what God is calling us to today. He was zealous. He was humble. My mother is dead and gone, but she used to tell me, baby, humbleness is the way. I did not understand that back then because my mom was older. But I so understand it now. Paul had to humble himself before God in order to do what God had called him to do. And he did it extraordinary. God took an ordinary man and used him phenomenally that we read about him today. He was powerful. He served. And he surrendered. He surrendered his life to God. And that's what God is calling us to today. We don't have to have those Damascus Road experiences if we will hold tight to God and obey his word his decrees we can live a life just as Paul 
But that doesn't come without a challenge. We are going to have challenges. It's a part of life. But it's not meant to kill us. It's meant to make us strong. Build our faith in God. And align ourselves so that we can reach back and pull somebody else out. He served God. Yes, he did. So how do you do this? How do you get here? How do you get to this place? Just by receiving grace. You don't have to pay for it. It's free. It is free. You don't have to work for it. You don't have to pretend. You don't have to put on the masks and the facages. All you got to do is surrender and let God be God. That's all you have to do. And commune with him and pray and let God love you because he loves us forever. So I pray that you all were blessed today. I pray that all we have is Paul's in the room. Amen. I love you all. And God bless you. God bless you, people of God.